Okay, guys, so we are done with Unit 7. We're going to start um, Unit 8 or Unit 9, uh, just depending on how it's been written. Um, and it's going to be all about circles. Okay, so this first lesson is going to look at some of the basics of circles, and it's going to be have a lot of vocab. Um, so, you know, the flashcards or Quizlet flashcards might be a good thing to use as you're learning these. Okay, so a circle we should know is a set of all points equidistant from a given point called the center. So just, you got your center point, it's the equal distance all the way around. Okay, you might have seen this year how we name our circles. There's the little symbol for circle and then you name it with the center. So this one over here to the right, the center is point P. So this would be uh, circle P. Okay, we should know a radius. It's a segment that has one endpoint at the center of the circle and one endpoint on the circle. So an example of the radius here would be segment PC. And my P didn't show up very well. Um, and then another one would be PA. So PC and PA. A chord, this might be a new one, is a segment that has both endpoints on the circle. Um, so it, it, if you look at this example over here, it has endpoints that are on the circle. So that would be from B to D would be an example of a chord, or from B to A is an example of a chord. So the endpoints of the segment are on kind of the edges of the outside of the circle. So those are the two examples that we can list here, B, D, and B, A. The diameter is a type of chord that contains the center point of the circle. So maybe you were thinking that as I was going over those examples, is that B, A is the diameter. It's also considered the cor a chord, okay? Um, there's this note here, there are infinite radii and diameters in a circle. Okay, we've kind of talked about this in previous conversations with circles. Okay, some more new vocab is secant. Secant is a line, ray, or segment that in, intersects the circle at two points. Okay, so if you look at the diagram to the right, uh, the secant segment would be AC because it's intersecting the circle at point A and point C. And it's a segment, you remember, because it doesn't have arrows on it. Tangent is a line, line segment, or ray that intersects the circle at exactly one point. Okay, so if you look here, um, our line AB, it's only intersecting the circle at point A. It's just touching the circle at that single point. Uh, and that's a tangent line. So our example that we're going to write down is line AB. Notice my notation for line. It's been a while since we've done that notation. Point of tangency is the point where a circle and a tangent line, ray, or line segment intersect. So it's the point that it's touching the circle. So in this example, A is the point of tangency. So we're going to go through and we're going to look at some segments and lines on this diagram and determine if they're a chord, secant, tangent, diameter, or radius of circle C. So the first one is segment HC. Okay, that is a radius. BE, okay, endpoints on the circle, that's a chord. DG is a line at touching at point E, so that is tangent. It's only touching at one point, it is tangent. BH, okay, it is the diameter, it's also technically a chord, but a di the diameter is more specific because it tells us it's also going through the center. And then lastly, AF. So if I find points A and F and connect them, it gives me this segment. Okay, that is a secant segment since it intersects the circle at two points. Okay, so next up we're talking about circumference of a circle, which we've talked about many times. 
It's the distance around the circle. There's two equations. Circumference equals 2 pi r or circumference equals just diameter pi. Okay, central angle, we've kind of talked about a few times, is an angle whose vertex is at the center of the circle. So if we look here, okay, our central angle in this one would be here. And we have our vertex is located at the center of the circle. So I'm going to list for our example angle FED. Okay, and notice this note right here, the central angle and the inscribed arc of the central angle have congruent measures. So what that means is, okay, so say this angle, FED, that we just identified, let's say it was 75 degrees, its arc from D to F on the outside of the circle would, would be equal to 75. Next up, inscribed angle. An angle that's vertex is on the circle and the sides of the angle are both chords. An angle that's vertex is on the circle. So its point is on the outside of the circle and the sides are both chords. So looking at this example here, it would be angle ACB. And I'm going to try and outline that a little bit better. Okay, because the vertex is on the outside of the circle and its two sides it's, are um, both chords. So angle A, C, B. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit more about arcs. Okay, an arc is a part of the circumference of a circle. So it's a piece of the outside of the circle. Okay, so first we have a semicircle, which that might sound a little familiar. It's just half of the circle. So over here, a semicircle will be half of the circle. We're going to notice as I go around, I touch points T, R, and S. And so I'm going to name that T, R, and S. And I'm going to show you guys the symbol for arc. And it's just kind of just drawn an arc over um, those letters. Okay. Now, we haven't talked about it yet, but a semicircle is a major arc. Okay. Um, and a semicircle and a major arc, they use three points to name it. Where um, a minor arc, it's smaller than a semicircle. It only uses two points to name it. So an example on this diagram of a minor arc, it's less than half of the circle, would be from R to S. It's a minor arc, so I'm going to name it with just two points, R and S. Okay, a major arc we kind of just talked about is larger than a semicircle. So a different major arc that we could do would be um, S T R. Okay, I'll outline that again so you can see it again. S T R. So that's definitely more than half the circle. And notice it kind of makes sense that you have to include uh, the third point because otherwise you wouldn't know what direction you're going. So S T R is a major arc. And adjacent arcs are arcs of the same circle that have exactly one point in common. So if I erase what I've got right now, okay, so S to R is one arc. And then if I just go to the next arc that's sharing point R, be arc RT. So notice they both share point R. So if I list those, we said arc SR and arc RT. And I should notice that in their names, they both share point R. Okay, so we're going to do a couple examples. Identify the following in circle O. What minor arcs do we have? Well, we have um, CE and AD. Those might be the first ones that jump out at you. But we also have CA and ED. 
And if I look, nothing else is going to be smaller, I don't think, than a semicircle. So we'll leave it at that. The semicircles that we have would be uh, CD is one I see. Well, and I should call it CAD. And then I would have CED, which would be the other side of that one. And then I have ACE. I'm going to fix my arc on that one. ACE. And I have the other way, ADE. Let's see if I can see any others. I don't think so. Major arcs that contain point A. So I'm going to do any of them that aren't our semicircles. So let's do um, C, A, E would be one. We could also do D, A, E. And I mean, you could do just the reverse of C, A, E, which would be A, E, A, C, but it's still the same arc. So we'll just leave it at those two. Um, adjacent arcs. So we'll just do, let's do two pairs. Um, and let's do... C, A, and A, D. They're both sharing point A. And then let's do D, E, and E, C. Okay, next up is arc addition postulate. And this should sound familiar from some of our first units where we had our segment addition postulate and our angle addition postulate. And if you remember those postulates, all it was saying was that you can take two parts and add them together to get the whole. And that's what this is telling us too. Okay, it says the measure of the arc formed by two adjacent arcs is the sum of the measure of the two arcs. And then we have an equation written here that says the measure of arc AB plus the measure of arc BC equals the measure of arc AC. Okay, that just means the parts sum to equal the whole. So it's just kind of common sense stuff. So we're going to use that and what I talked about up here, where you can use the um, central angle to know the uh, arc measure to find the measure of some arcs here. Something to note is that the directions here are asking us to find the measure of each arc, which is different than finding the length of each arc. So when we're finding the measure of the arcs, we're going to keep its measure in degrees. Okay, It's kind of saying how open is the arc. Um, and so you'll notice this first or this one right here is actually labeled with 58 degrees. So is that one of the one they ask us to find? CD? Nope, of course not. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and look at the first one. BC, though. So it gives us the angle inside uh, with of BOC, but we can know that the measure of the arc outside of that angle is equal to it. So the measure of arc BC equals 32 degrees. Now they want to know BD. Here's where our angle addition postulate comes into the play. BD spans this whole distance, so I just need to add 32 and 58 together, which would be 90, if I'm doing my math right in my head. Hopefully I am. I don't have a calculator handy. Um, a, B, C. So I'm going to first go and just figure out where that's at visually. A, B, C. Well we should recognize that that is a semicircle. So we should know um, that a semicircle's angle is 180 degrees. So the measure of a arc ABC is 180 degrees. And then lastly, AB, which is only part of that semicircle here. Okay, so this is kind of the reverse of the angle addition postulate. We just said that whole portion was 180 degrees, and we know that that small slice with BC is 32 degrees, so I just need to do 180 minus 32 degrees to get uh, my ang the measure of BA, and if I try and do that in my head, 148,
Okay, let's look at the next one. Find the measure of xy and the measure of dxm in circle C. So the measure of xy, if I go look at that, xy goes here to here. I know that from d to y, it's 40 degrees. And hidden kind of inside from d to x is 56 degrees. So I just need to add those together, which would be 96 degrees. So the measure of arc xy equals 96 degrees. Then they want, no, I shouldn't erase all of that. Let's do that. The measure of arc dxm, which goes around this way. So I don't, I know the 56 portion, but I don't know these other two portions. But looking at this, I should recognize that from m to x is a semicircle. That's 180 degrees. So then if I use my angle addition postulate, I just need to add 180 and 56 of arc dxm equals 236. So the last thing we're going to talk about is a mix of kind of a little bit of a review with what we just talked about and a slight new twist to it. Um, so we're going to be looking at finding arc length, which is just a fraction or a piece of the circle's circumference. Now, you might be thinking, well, what were we just finding? Remember, we were finding the arc measure, which is found in degrees. It's kind of like how open, what angle is the arc opening at? Um, this is finding like if you were to unwrap the circle and lay it out flat and measure it with a ruler, how long is that piece? Okay, so there are two different things, arc measure and arc length. Okay, now back in unit five, um, we did the area of sectors. And this is what my notes looked like for my classes. Okay, and we used um, that formula there, area equals pi r squared times the measure of the angle we're wanting divided by 360. So we took the whole <clears throat> area of the circle, pi r squared, and we multiplied it by the fraction of the sector that we wanted to find. Okay, we're going to take that same idea here to get our arc length. Okay, so we're going to take the whole circumference, which is 2 pi r, and if you want to rewrite it with a pi symbol instead, we're taking the whole circumference, and we're going to multiply it by the fraction divided by 360 with the measure of our arc in the numerator. So we're just taking a fraction of however much of the circumference that we want. Okay, so let's go ahead and try a couple of examples. It says find the length of each arc, leave your answers in terms of pi. So the length of xy, so if I look at my arc xy, it's right here. I need to first figure out what is its measure. Well, I know that I don't really have any degree measures besides I have this box, which I should know is 90 degrees. And then I should also recognize that this is half of my circle here. It's a straight line, so that means that if that side's 90 degrees, then it also has to be 90 degrees over here for the total of 180 degrees of half of a circle. So I know the measure of my arc xy is 90 degrees. So my formula up there, okay, I can find the arc length of xy, of arc xy, by doing 90 divided by 360 multiplied by 2 pi r, so I need my radius. Well, they give me the diameter is 16 inches, which tells me that my radius would be half of that, so 8. So times 2 times pi times 8. So if I simplify this in terms of pi, okay, 90 divided by 360, the zeros are going to cancel. And I, I know it's going to be a fraction because my denominator is bigger. Both 9 and 36 are divisible by 9. So if I reduce this fraction dividing top and bottom by 9, I'm going to get 1 fourth times 2 times pi times 8. If I next do my uh, 2 times 8, I'm going to get 16. So I have a 4 times 16 pi. Don't forget your pi. And then I just need to do 1 4 times 16, which would become 4. So the length of arc xy is 4 pi. And it should be 4 pi inches 
and just inches because it's a length, not an area or a volume. Okay, let's try one more. The length of ADB. So first I have to figure out the measure of ADB. So they give me that this side over here is 150 degrees, but I need the other side. So remember, 360 is the total degrees of a circle. So if I subtract 150, that's going to give me 210 degrees. Wow, 210. So that is my measure of ADB. So if I want to find the length of arc ADB, I'm going to do 210 divided by 360 times 2 pi, and I need the radius, which they give me the radius this time. So 2 pi times 18. So now I'm just simplifying this. Again, the zeros are going to cancel. If I think 21 and 36 to reduce that, I know they're both divisible by 3. So the length of ADB, 21 divided by 3 is 7. 36 divided by 3 is 12. Let's go ahead in the same step, do 2 times 18, which would be 36. So then I'm going to do 36 times 7. If I get my handy dandy calculator out here now. That's 252. And I'm going to go ahead and see at the same time if that's divisible by 12. It is. So I have 252 divided by 12 pi. But 252 does divide evenly by 12 to be 21. So my length of arc 80 is 21 pi centimeters.